Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You notice these guys that are our age that uh, all you see them with a girl that's like 25 years old on their arm? Yeah. Rich guys? Yeah. Richer than any of us. Yeah. Uh, what is the correct or ideal age difference gap for a happy marriage? What's your situation with you and your wife? I'm five and a half years older. And I am a year and a half younger. Dang. My, my wife was rob robbing the cradle. She got the cougar. She, yeah. Yeah, she's the cougar. So what is the ideal age gap? We're going to talk about that and much more on this episode of Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Glad you're here today. Thank you for checking out our show. We sure do appreciate it. A young, attractive spouse won't make you happy in the long run, according to a new study. Researchers found that the thrill of a wide age gap tends to wear off within a decade, leaving mismatched couples unprepared for marital bliss. The perfect fling might be half your age, but the perfect life partner probably is not. Yeah. Uh, marital satisfaction declines more rapidly over time for both men and women who have large age gaps with their spouses compared to those with small age gaps. Um, this decline in satisfaction erases those initial higher levels of satisfaction at the beginning of the marriage for men and women with younger spouses. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Easy come, easy go. Besides prior studies suggest that desire for a much younger partner is largely a guy thing. In 2001, for instance, Dutch social scientists asked men and women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s what they considered the ideal age for a long-term partner and a casual fling. Try juggle on those. <laughs> Both women and men preferred age-appropriate spouses, but men alone opted for significantly younger suitors when it came to brief affairs. Let me address that just a little bit. There are situations where a man might be 40-ish, okay. and he's never been married, and he wants to have kids. Uh... There going. comes a point in a woman's life where it's not really that safe to have uh, a child at, at a late age, late in life. Uh, and so in that case, I sure understand why, uh, say, a 45-year-old man would want to maybe date a 30-year-old woman. Right. But 21? Okay, um, you're just trying to prove something. You know, that reminds me too, Ronnie. I went to my um, well, what and what high school reunion did I just have? Forty, probably. Yeah, forty. Yeah. And um, yeah, there was a guy there who uh, was kind of a I don't know if you know what this word means, but a dweeb. I know okay. you know. Uh, yeah. He was kind of a dweeb in high school. Yeah. And I guess he wanted to show all of us that he was really prestigious and 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 wealthy and um he made it yeah and so first of all that is such a stupid idea because i know these guys that go out and they rent like a ferrari or something right and they they spend two thousand dollars renting the car for one night yeah and all they do is park it in some lot and no one ever sees it right well that's different when you have a woman on your arm and that's what this guy did and I have to say, it was so blatantly obvious because the four of us, my wife and I and he and his whatever, no, I won't say that, pretty woman, uh, we were talking and she was telling us stuff that was leading us to believe that she had never even gone out on a date with this guy before. Oh. It, was, it, was, it was embarrassing and I felt bad for him. But you know what? If that's what makes him happy, fine. But see, you know, when you're 60 years old and you're dating a 25-year-old hairdresser, eh, that's not going to work out. It she, just isn't. If she can't name all of the Beatles like that, yeah. I have no use for her. If she doesn't know that Paul McCartney was in a band before Wings, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> Sorry. Probably gonna work. So here's a great example. All right. Recently, eh, you know what, it's been about a year ago now, my daughter was in town and my wife was working. It was on a Friday. My daughter said, let's go to lunch. I said, great idea. We got in my Corvette. Oh boy, here we it comes. We drove into Folsom mm -hmm. and we parked the car. And as I'm getting out of the car, uh, a couple of ladies I knew it. got out of their car and they were judging me with yeah, their eyes. I I'm could sure. tell. Mm -hmm. They rolled their eyes. They, they're doing this. I, f I felt like saying, hey, cool it. This is my daughter. But I'm like, no, nah, I'll give them something to talk about. That's fine. Yeah. It is kind of funny. Gotta judge. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that's cool. People live their lives, for God's sakes. What, what business is that of yours? It's no business. It ain't your business. It's none of your business. As for the precise age gap for marital bliss. There we go, Ronnie, the numbers. Let's, let's get down to, to A brass tax. Here. Previous study indicates that the sweet spot may be around one year. Ooh. Couples one year apart had a 3% chance of splitting compared to 18% for f couples five years apart. Ruh -ruh. So that's you and I. Oh. 39% uh, for 10 and 95% for 20. Wow. Well, I have to tell you this. If you're going to marry now, when I got married, well, my wife was still five and a half years younger. <laughs> <laughs> she was in uh, 11th grade. I think. Yes. <laughs> so you have to, even though she was young, she was mature. And so if you're marrying somebody who speaks Valley Girl and is way more concerned with their makeup and hair. And, and says like before they say yeah, anything. And what the or Kardashians I mean, are doing yeah, or I mean, any of that. That's probably not going to work out well. You have to. My my wife came from a uh, a good family who had been married for 27 years when we got married, and so she knew that it's a commitment to be married that long. And now my wife and I uh, just celebrated our 34th wedding anniversary in a row. Yes, uh, all yeah, yeah, all all back to back. So it is, it makes for, it, it's really, it's about choosing. I see that you could possibly marry somebody maybe 10 or 15 years younger if it were the right person. And I think that's less of a big deal as you get older because a, if you're 60 and you're marrying a 45 year old, there's 15 years there, but a little bit more mature than, you know, a 35 year old marrying a 20 year old. Yeah, I don't know if I can get on that train, Ronnie. Fifteen years, you know, when you when you're talking about more than a decade, you're you've grown up in two different worlds. I mean, think about it, Ronnie. Yeah. When we went to high school or college, uh, we were reading books, right? Textbooks. Well, we were supposed to be. Well, I didn't. I was assuming you did, <laughs> but I guess I was wrong. But my, what I'm saying is. You know, like that Beatles comment. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know the Beatles and she knows Bon Jovi. Right. I, I, you know, I don't know if there's much middle ground there is what I'm saying. And the more things that you have in common, the more likely you are to have a successful marriage. Right. That's not to say that you have to have everything in common because that doesn't work either. No. You got to have stuff that you do yourself, you right. know, time away from the relationship, which allows you to grow and maintain your friends and that sort of thing. And that's another thing, you know, what are her friends or her family going to say when she's 45 and dating a 60 year old man? Well, and that's probably the biggest part of it is the friends and family yeah. aspect mm -hmm. of it. Uh, because if they're not down with it, uh, you may be down with it initially, but they're going to they're going to kind of talk you out of it. Yeah, at some try point. to. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think that, uh, yeah, the, the bigger age gaps are certainly a challenge, but not insurmountable. I think it could work. Okay, so today on Men Are So Smart, we're talking about marriage. And uh, our next story here says, science says married couples who do this have better sex lives. Piqued your curiosity? Let's find out more. Well, there's a reason why mindfulness 
is currently one of the biggest buzzwords in the wellness community. Recent research has shown that mindful meditation can help you stay sharp and focused later in life, enable you to better regulate your emotions, decrease your stress levels, improve your sleep cycle. One recent study even found that just 10 minutes of meditation can give you the same benefits as an extra 44 minutes of sleep. Now, Ryan, before you, you go here, um, I learned how to meditate from a girlfriend, I guess it's been about 25 years ago. And I don't really talk about this because it's not real manly, uh, especially when you think about what you need to do to meditate. Right. Um, it works for me. It really does. Uh, when I have achy bones, you know I have two bad knees. They're, they're yeah. very bad, and they probably should both be replaced. But when my knees are really aching and it burns up the inside of my thigh, um, and I meditate, I can almost get some relief for a small amount of time. And you know, you don't have to meditate for an hour. It's not like doing yoga. You stay completely still, and you start by tensing up your toes and concentrating and focusing only on your toes. And then you move up a little bit to your ankles. And so now you've relaxed your toes and you begin to move your ankles. Maybe you tighten them up and, and then let them go and then let that feeling go. And as you're doing this, you're quietly blowing out through pursed lips kind of resisting just a little bit and you actually work your way into the pain for instance my knees so I've done my toes my ankles now it's time for me to completely relax from my mind what my knees feel like and then you proceed afterwards you go all the way up to your neck into your head and if you spend a good 15 to 20 minutes doing this where and, and you know what you do you picture in your mind where your happy place is me it's on a beach in Hawaii and that's what I think about, the, ro the waves rolling in and crashing on the beach and the sound that I hear. And I, I make that my focal point. And everything else, I just tune out completely. You don't want to have a TV on or I guess if you want music, that's something. I don't do that. But I have to say, even as a men are so smart guy, it really works for me. Have you ever tried it or considered it? You know, my problem, and I have tried it, but not certainly that way. I kind of tried it just free form, mm -hmm. uh, trying not to think about anything. And when you're trying not to think about anything, you think about everything. Yeah, I know. It, you can do it though. You can do it when you have a focal point, I swear to you. And you're breathing properly. And you know, part of it is, I don't think I was this bad about having things on my mind before I had a phone. Ah. Uh. Because now, like a cell phone, because now I find myself like, even if I'm just falling asleep, I grab for my phone, what's on my agenda for tomorrow? Yeah. And I, I have something, I'm mostly retired, I have something on my agenda almost every day of the week. Yeah. Where I have a commitment for someone or something all the time. And so it's hard to get a couple hours uh, set aside for any type of myself issues mm -hmm. um, this is a great opportunity to do it if you can break it down before your wife comes home the dog's out of the room it's the last thing you need when you're trying to focus a dog licking your ear you know that doesn't right. work yeah uh, so you got to set some time aside to do it and I'll tell you what I'll make you a deal I don't know what your day looks like today but if you get some time a little later on I've explained to you exactly how to do it if you do it I'll do it all right, and all then right, next right. week, we'll talk uh, about it. We, we will, and we'll see if we accomplish anything. And I don't want you to half-ass this. You know how all I right. feel about that. All right. Do you think I've told you enough about meditation? That you know what? I'll Google it and okay. I'll find out the proper way to, to put yourself into a meditative state. And I'm not one of those uh, naturalists. I'm not a naturist. Uh, I'm not a bigamist, and I'm a lot of not a lot of, a lot of other ist things. But I know meditation, 
and I know that it's so good for you. In fact, no one is going to be in my house tonight. They're all going out of town. So I will have that opportunity a little bit later this, this evening. Um, sometimes it's not good. Close meditation is not good to the time that you go to sleep. Oh, yeah. Because you, you know, that's all you can think about. Right. But sometimes when you do it about an hour before you go to sleep, it really helps you sleep. As that says, uh, one recent study even found that just 10 minutes of meditation can give you the same benefits as 44 extra minutes of sleep. Wow. Well, and that would be my other issue is if I am that relaxed, I may just fall asleep. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Because you needed it. You know, right. Otherwise, you wouldn't have. Yeah. But, um, you know, if, if you can get through a good... And you know what? I don't even want you to start it, try to set any records doing this. Just do it for 10 minutes. That's all I'm asking you. All right? And, and I'll do, I'll probably go a little longer, maybe maybe twice that, 20 minutes, because right. I, I know what I'm doing. And um, I... I not a doctor, I say that all the time, but I guarantee you, if you can accomplish that state of nothingness and just focusing on the waves crashing or whatever it works for you, Ronnie, I don't know if it's wrestling bad guys to the ground or whatever, uh, but give it a try. Okay, all, all right. right, all right, that sounds all right. good. So this article goes on to say, according to a new published stir in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy, Mindfulness can also provide a major boost to your sex life. Researchers, man, researchers surveyed 194 hetero, heterosexual couples aged 35 to 60 via an online survey and found that those who were sexually mindful, as in more in the moment and aware of their partner during sex, reported higher levels of both sexual satisfaction and self-esteem. All right, so the person who did this study says, I've been studying sex for some time, and a number of years ago was introduced to mindfulness. Mm -hmm. uh, people often struggle to feel connection and purpose in sex. When I teach sexual mindfulness to couples, most are a little skeptical at first. However, as they practice, they are amazed at the importance of awareness, curiosity, acceptance, and letting go of self and partner judgment. The study aligns with previous research that found that mindfulness has a beneficial impact on women's sex lives. For example, one 2018 study of 451 women of various ages revealed that women who practice mindfulness meditation scored higher than women with no meditation experience on measures of sexual function, desire, body awareness, and mood. Hmm. Uh, it also apparently can help men too. Uh, one study published last year in the Journal of Sexual Medicine found that mindfulness can help men overcome common sexual issues such as erectile dysfunction. Uh, it's not much of a surprise given the issue has long been tied to performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. And the key goal of mindfulness is to help you get out of your head. It's stress. I know what it yep. is. Yep. Uh, 2013 paper published in the Canadian Journal of Human Sexuality also suggests the practice can help men with premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, and low sexual desire. Now, you might think we would might make jokes about this, but you know what? We know our audience. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and we know that these are very real things that they're discussing. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who watches the show regularly. It's you, isn't it? No. Oh. Okay. I don't watch the show. <laughs> Only when I edit it. His name is Tree. R. Tree Plumtree. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he just went through prostate cancer. And as I've sworn before that if anybody comes to me with help or questions, I'm there in a minute. You know that, Ronnie. Right. Uh, having gone through it, that's the least that I can do is help somebody who is going through it. And uh, there are problems that men go through, but it's not the end. I want you to understand that. Take it from a guy who knows. It's not the end. And meditation can help you with some of those problems. Don't be opposed to it. Don't just piss it away. Give it some thought, all right? Uh, so if you're one of the 75% of people who claim to be unhappy with the state of sex in their marriage, science says mindfulness can help. It may initially seem a little counterintuitive, but slowing the experience down, being less goal-oriented, and more intentionally, uh, actually helps people feel better about themselves, closer to their partner, 
and more satisfied with the sexual experience. The average person can improve their sexual relationship with a little instruction and practice. It doesn't require new positions or special skill. Better sex may be as simple as slowing down, being less judgmental about yourself and your partner, and paying attention to touch, arousal, and, and this is the thing where men struggle, the emotional connection that's felt during sex. That's where men and women differ. It really is. Men are all about visual. And women are all about the bonding, the connection that takes place during intercourse. Um, and if you could ever meet in the middle somewhere, God only knows how good your sex could be. Yep. Again, not a doctor. But you did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I don't even remember that. I was so drunk. <laughs> no, that's not true. All right, so there you go. Uh, some thoughts on marriage and sex for men and women. We hope you've enjoyed the show and found it informational. I know it's not one of our I sure did. hilarious, uh, gut-busting shows, but the information is very important. And, of course, Ronnie and I, are, as men, are always concerned about men's health as well. So, having said that, uh, be sure and subscribe to our channel for more great content that we bring to you virtually four times a week. You can see Men Are So Smart on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern. And we do a little thing most Sundays called Sunday Morning Mass, which we really enjoy because we can bounce a little around a little bit on topics. Right. We always do some Forrest Fenn stuff, but we also do some other things. Like, I think last week we did something about the last five songs that we played. Right. right? Yeah. Got a lot of great feedback on that as well. Wanted to say that... Um, our website has been updated with new pictures, new videos. I have a new blog on there. Ronnie's should be coming. posted. Yep. It sh should happen any day now. Yep. Uh, there's lots to do, including fun surveys that you can take. Like one of the questions is, um, who do you enjoy more on Men Are So Smart? Lou, Ronnie, other, both of them together. And it's always both of them together. So I'm sorry, <laughs> Ronnie. I, I'd love to have them say you, but they don't even say me. So it's both of us. All right. Remember that. All right. Uh, so, yeah, check out the website. Uh, check us out on Facebook at Men Are So Smart. And I think that's just about it. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm Luke Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. You know what this has been? Huh? The show we do. We just did a show? No, the name of the show. I you know, know this. Who's, who's on first? I don't know. Third base. I heard men were so smart. Oh yeah, that's yeah. it. That's oh, it's done now. Yeah, yeah whatever. Really.